Right then, I want to talk to you today about a potentially very special young player that United have got coming through the ranks. Now, we have got that gaping hole in central midfield, that over-reliance on McTominay and Fred playing week in, week out, literally no other options. The lack of commitment from Paul Pogba might encourage Manchester United to look towards some youth. Now, you've got Ethan Galbraith doing very good things on loan. You've got Dylan Levitt, who's got a screamer this week, doing bits on loan over in the Scottish Prem. And of course, you've got Jimmy Garner really smashing it up in the Championship. Now, becoming the name everybody at Manchester United is thinking he needs to be a part of the first-team squad next season. Deserved and earned. But there's another young player that we've got who isn't currently on loan and could actually take advantage of the fact that he isn't on loan by forcing his way into the team in in pretty strange circumstances. But that's usually how young players get their opportunity. Not many young players have a planned introduction to the first team. They're usually getting a chance because someone's injured or there's a sheer lack of form and they just happen to be the person on the spot at the time to be able to take advantage of that opportunity. Now, Mabry is one that we have to keep a serious eye on. He's been impressing coaches within the club. The Athletic are now reporting that um, the rate of his development physically, mentally and technically, um, he is at where they think he might be when it comes to both stamina and resilience to play central midfield at the top of the game, namely Manchester United in the Premier League. He is an extremely technical footballer, um, gifted, disgustingly technical and and tricky when he needs to be as well. Someone that's got that creativity, that spark to be able to open up a game. He's also shown that he's got the tenacity and the physicality to be able to be proficient at the defensive side of the game as well. If I had to talk to you about what style of player he is, there's a lot of Paul Pogba in his game where you know that he could probably play deeper, but he maybe don't like it. You know that he probably could play box to box number eight, but you're not going to get the best out of him necessarily doing that. He's probably at his best in a bit of a free role where he's able to express himself and show those skills that he's got as an attacking midfielder, maybe as a number 10. Now, in a 4-3-3, you're going to have to play as an 8, but you can be the more attacking of the two eights potentially. How he would fit in alongside Bruno, it might look a little bit like Pogba, um, where he's a little bit too attacking if you've got both of them playing and you maybe do need someone who's a little bit more combative. But I also see a possibility where as he matures and as he grows into a, a, um, a larger human, there might be an opportunity for him to be that tenacious technical number eight. Um, he doesn't quite play like him now, but I could see him developing into a Tony Cruz style midfielder. Bastian Schweinsteiger was a number 10 until he was told to come and play back. And, and you would think of him now as a box-to-box enforcer, wouldn't you? And I can see a similar sort of trajectory for Hannibal Mabry. Supreme technician, beautiful skills, but does have a bit of a dog in him, and I like that about him. Now, let's look at his profile then a little bit. So he was born on the 21st of January 2003 in a suburb of Paris, and he started his career with Paris in 2009. Then he spent a little bit of time at Francis Clairefontaine um, Football Academy before joining AS Monaco. He was then scouted by Manchester United, City, Liverpool, Arsenal, um, and Arsenal actually took him on trial. Um, and there was interest from Paris Saint-Germain, Bayern Munich, Barcelona, but he moved to Old Trafford in 2009 for a fee of around £5 million, rising potentially to £10 million. So we knew there was something seriously special about this kid you know, as he was doing his exams, essentially. After moving to United, he wasted little time to make an impression. He did manage to establish himself in the under-23s, um, despite being just 17 years of age, which is always a good sign. Not not unheard of, but it's a, it's a good sign that they're playing several years up, especially if they've come from abroad. Very little um, settling in time required, straight into the physicality of what is, you know, playing against players six and seven years older than you. And he's, he's also made four appearances for United in the EFL Trophy. He was handed his senior debut at the back end of last season. Um, he played eight minutes. Uh, I think he came on for one matter um, against Wolves at Molyneux. So what's next for him? Well, I think Ralph Ragnick's promoted him, supposedly, on the back of... You know, he's been away with Tunisia um, at AFCON. He only played twice, both off the bench. 
Um, but he has made 11 appearances now for Tunis. He does seem to be something that they're really looking to progress into the first team. Still 19. Yet to make a first team appearance this season, but has returned from AFCON um, and is said to have caught the eye of both Cristiano Ronaldo and Ralph Radnick, uh, who, st- who stated that from what he's seen so far, he's been impressed. And there's a lot of talk that he's now been moved into the first team dressing room um, and he's going to be considered a first team player. When you think of the players who've just exited either on loan or permanently, the, the opportunity is there. And this is what Manchester United to me represents. It's give someone an opportunity and let's find out whether they're good enough or not. Um, he conducts an interview with La Parisienne while away with Tunisia, declared his intention to challenge for a first team spot. He says, when I go back to United, uh, we will see if there are any chances for me. And if I can, I'm going to try to earn a place in the team. In any case, I'll work hard for it. And I've got to be honest with you, I love that final sentence. Try to earn a place. And in any case, I will work hard for it. If we ask for nothing else from players from Manchester United, it's to know that they have to work. And once you've got it, now you've got to work even harder. From the little glimpses that we've seen of him and and from obviously conversations around players that um, play with him um, and are watching him in training, everyone's got high hopes for this kid. Everybody has got a bit of an eye that this kid might be able to go and do something in the game. I think he does have to adapt his game slightly to be able to fit in. I think there, there's so many opportunities as a six. I don't see him being that. I do see him being um, a potentially a number eight for us. And who knows? If he manages to, to go and do bits, he could save United having to sign someone in the summer. Although I think that's probably a little bit too soon for those sorts of predictions. What do you guys reckon? Does he need a loan in the championship first? Could he make a, you know, a handful of appearances at the back end of this season? Then go and do a full season in the championship where he's only going to be 19 and 20. Come back and show us what he's really about. Because if he can go and have the sort of impact that someone like Jimmy Garner's just had, then we've got a hell of a player on our hands uh, and bring Jimmy Garner back the other way and put him in the first team and see what he can really do. Um, But let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? Think he's going to get any games this season? Because I do. And then it'll be about where does his development go from there. Cheers for tuning in. See you in the next one. Identifies as a lazy person. Yeah, yeah identifies as a lazy person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been here since like eight this morning. It's a to five job, you. So, when gets in half an hour late every day. <laughs> Not very punctual. So, I believe you've never got married. Who was the vicar, Joe? Who married them, so, Joe? I mean, that's the first two people. Well, I'm on there. They can't do anything as a throuple. No, they could have had a kid, made that kid become a vicar, and then made that vicar marry them. That's sex before marriage, though. Can't do that. You've got to help. No, that wasn't good. Eve made from Adam's rib. What? That's right, so. We've got a problem here, Cal. I, I don't mind pineapple, so I'm all good. Pineapple on pizza? <laughs> no way, no how, no chance. <laughs> pineapple should not be on a pizza. Why is it bad to call United Man U? How do you have the inside scoop on United Info? Do I support any other teams other than Man United? The fuck I do. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.